What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about AMC and some key things to keep a lookout for that is going to suggest a squeeze is right around the corner. We're going to go over exactly what these catalysts are. We actually have one of these coming up and I'm going to do my best to explain that catalyst as simple as possible because I know a lot of people are throwing around some pretty complex financial terms and concepts. So I'm going to try to break this down as simple as I can for you guys. So we have a lot to go over in this video. We have Wells Fargo potentially buying a lot more AMC. We're going to go over exactly what that means. We have another box office, office blowout with uh, Godzilla versus Kong, and we have a new movie that has been released that I would like to go over as well. I'm also going to go over and draw some comparisons to the anatomy of a short attack and, and figure out exactly how it is possible that there is so much action going on in the OTC market if retail traders own such a high percentage of the float. So before we get into all of that information, if you guys enjoy uh, the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. And as you guys can tell, the price that I am showing for AMC right Right now is most likely very different from what you guys are seeing. I record these videos the night before, but the information is not going to change. I'm still going to go over the DTC005 and how that is going to play out over the next week and how that is going to really hurt hedge funds. But first, let's get into this Wells Fargo situation. So we can see that Wells Fargo and company MN increases stake in AMC Entertainment Holdings. So at, for, at face value, this looks like a very good thing thing. Uh, we're seeing institutions uh, come out and enter long positions in a stock that has a really high potential to short squeeze, but let's take a little bit of a deeper dive. So Wells Fargo and company MN increased its position in AMC holdings by 42.4% in the fourth quarter, according to the company in its most recent filing with the SEC. The fund owned 340,616 shares of the company's stock after acquiring an additional 101,000 shares during the quarter. So we don't actually know if Wells Fargo is still holding their position. When we come back and look at the chart of AMC, we saw a massive spike in January when the GameStop situation was popping off. And when we go back and look when Wells Fargo possibly bought, the share price was trading at 2 or $3. Now, if you're an institution like Wells Fargo and you buy into a stock at 3 and it spikes up to 20 or even the high teens, I think it's highly unlikely that they still are holding their position. Now, I'm not trying to spread FUD in that this isn't a good thing that we are seeing from AMC that could push the stock higher, but I just want you guys to fully understand that, that those reports are a lagging indicator and we don't know what Wells Fargo is doing at the current time. This whole thing about we don't actually know what's going on is a very common theme with this AMC situation. Now, this is also what makes AMC, in my mind, have so much potential. Since there is so much manipulation going on behind the scenes, and we don't really know what the true short interest of AMC is at the current time, or what is actually going on with these fail-to-deliver numbers, there's DTC rulings coming left and right, the hedge funds are using deep-in-the-money calls to hide their short positions, we really don't know what is going on. But with everybody uncovering slightly uh, more important pieces of information every single week, it just points to the fact that there is a massive squeeze coming. Now, when we come over here, we can see that Godzilla versus Kong rises to $358 million worldwide. Mortal Kombat kicks off with $11 million, sorry about that, overseas international box office. So I'm going to bring you guys back to the analogy that I have been talking about with AMC on when we could see or why we could see this short squeeze situation start to pop off. I wanted you guys to think about a giant stick of dynamite with a really long wick coming out of it. Right now, the apes and retail investors have a massive lighter and they're clicking the lighter every single day by buying and holding these shares of AMC. Now they're clicking it, it's sparking, but the spark is not lighting and not lighting the wick. Once we see a good enough piece of news come out about this company, or we see these, these DTC rulings really start to affect these hedge funds, that is when retail is going to be able to light the wick in the fuse, and that is going to set off the dynamite for this situation.
We also have the SLR requirement expiring. That happened on March 31st, April 1st. So this is going to take a little bit of time to take effect. But essentially, all of these news articles coming out is saying are saying that the U.S. banks are sufficiently capitalized to withstand the SLR expiration. Now, we've seen these banks uh, and these institutions before lend way too much money to Archegos. So you really don't know if they're sufficiently capitalized unless the Fed actually came in and has done a stress test, which I don't think they have. Now, I want to bring you guys over to something that I think you are going to find very interesting before we get into this DTC situation and how it is going to set off and possibly light the fuse on that uh, metaphorical stick of dynamite that I was talking about earlier. So Global Links Corporation. So by the way, this comes from an article called The Anatomy of a Short Attack. It's a really interesting article if you guys would like to read it. It's on Seeking Alpha. All you have to do is type into Google The Anatomy of a Short Attack and it pops right up. But one of the most important pieces is right here. So Global Links Corporation is an example of how wholesale counterfeiting of shares will decimate a company's stock price. Global Links is a company that provides computer services to the real estate industry. By early 2005, their stock price had dropped to a fraction of a cent. At that point, an investor, Robert Simpson, purchased 100% plus of Global Links 1.1 million issued and outstanding shares. He immediately took delivery of his shares and filed the appropriate forms with the SEC, disclosing he owned all of the company's stock. His total investment, $5,205. The share price was 0 0.00434 the day after he acquired all of the company's shares. So keep in mind, he owns everything. He can see it in his accounts. He owns everything. The volume on the over-the-counter market was $37 million. And when you think to yourself, how is it possible that there's any volume on the market if one individual owns this many shares? And that's where the synthetic shares part comes in. All of these different hedge funds are trying to uh, maneuver their positions all the way around. Um, and we can see the blatant manipulation right here in this story. The following day saw 22 million shares change hands, all without Simpson trading a single share. It is possible that the SEC had been conducting a secret investigation, but if that would be difficult without the company's involvement. It is more likely the SEC has not done anything about this fraud. Now let's bring this back to AMC. So there have been numbers floating around that retail investors own between 80% and I think the highest I saw was about 93% of the overall float. When we come over here, we can see that the total float for AMC is going to be about 403.97 million. That is the amount of shares that are available and issued to the public. That is what is public record. This does not count all of these synthetic shares uh, actually created, which we are going to get into in a minute. So let's say it's 90% uh, that retail owns, that would put retail investors owning about 360 million shares of AMC. Now, what's very interesting about this and how it connects back to this uh, little case study from the anatomy of a short attack is when we come over to the OTC issue data for AMC, we can see that 1.73 billion shares were traded on the over-the-counter market. That does not seem possible if retail investors are buying and holding a significant uh, majority of the float. Now, it's possible that a lot of these trades have been carried out and executed on behalf of brokerages such as Robinhood or Weevil. But even if that was half of this number, that would still put us at about 800 million shares, a little bit over 850 million shares of AMC that have been traded on the over-the-counter markets. That screams manipulation. And we come over to the dark pool. So these are the numbers that, uh, these right here are the numbers that don't account for the dark pool. These are the dark pool right here. And we can see that 13.2 million shares were traded in the dark pools. Now, dark pools are even less transparent than this other OTC data, so we don't even know if this data is accurate. The reason why I am not showing you guys uh, the short interest data on AMC, even though Ortex is supposedly uh, the most up-to-date and accurate representation of the short interest of AMC at the current time, is the fact that we really don't know what the short interest is. We've seen uh, the, the way that these hedge funds and institutions are actually required to report their short interest, and it's self reported and it's actually in these institutions best interest to come out and lie to these different regulatory institutions on what their actual short interest is because uh, as we saw in the example in Turkey the fines for credit suites and a couple of these other institutions that were engaging in naked short selling was only a million dollars so they are probably budgeting into their yearly budget the amount of fines that they are going to be able to receive 
uh, from actually uh, engaging in these illegal activities. Now, let's get into this DTC-005 situation. And, and what's really important about this is that it's going to take effect within the next couple of weeks. We don't really know when it's going to take into effect. The SEC still has to review it. But once it does, this is going to create a massive barrier for hedge funds unless they are able to find a way around it. I don't know that they are going to be able to, but it would not surprise me if they were able to get around these rules in some shape or form. Now, if, if, if short sellers are facing a squeeze because shares are hard to buy or scrutiny for holding in a legal short position, they can create an appearance, appearance of having closed their short position through the use of deceptive option chains. So essentially what they're doing is they're using uh, in the money calls in order to do this. It does not make them actually cover their positions. It just resets the clock. So the fail to deliver numbers that we see reported uh, every so often don't skyrocket and it trips off something and everybody starts looking. Why are all of these shares being failed to deliver? That would suggest in a really high amount of naked shorting. So this would no longer be able to happen under the DTC 005. So we are also seeing that they would create a tracking system for these shares that have been lent out. So essentially what this means and what it's going to protect against is say uh, you are an institution and you lend out shares or a, you're a broker, you lend out shares to an institution. So say you lend out 100 shares, they then sell those shares on the open market, creating a short position for that first hedge fund or institution. Now there has to be a buyer on the open market for those shares. So let's say buyer A buys those shares from the institution. Now buyer A is at a separate broker and they can then lend those shares out again. So what this is going to protect against is the same block of shares being sold short twice, 10 times, 100 times, even a thousand times, which is why we are seeing those failed to deliver numbers skyrocket in the past. But what they are doing now is they were abusing these in the money calls to create the sense that their short positions have closed, which in reality they have not. So this is going to create a massive barrier for hedge funds and we could see a squeeze because of this rule being taken into effect. So this was the catalyst that I was talking about earlier in the beginning of this video on one of the things that could really send AMC to the moon. Now, uh, the other thing that I really could see uh, causing AMC to spike is more just fundamental good news about the company. A lot of people are pretty freaked out about this 500 million share offering. Uh, in my opinion, that's probably not good uh, for this squeeze. But uh, in reality, what has been said by the CEO is that they are just planning on asking for approval to do this. They aren't saying that they're actually going to do it. So uh, I think we're really going to have to wait and see. The overall sentiment online from what I've seen is that a lot of people are voting no. And if retail owns as many shares as everybody thinks they do uh, in terms of the percent of the flow, 80 to 90 percent, if all of those individuals vote no and those votes are counted correctly, we could see this this. 500 million share offering actually get put right off the table right off the bat. So that would be good for this squeeze in the short term. But in the long term, it probably would be a good thing for AMC to do this offering. We've seen them actually uh, enter into a, an equipment purchase agreement with Cynodyme and Cynodyme is a streaming service. So we could see AMC use this money to get into streaming, but we really don't know. In order to even consider voting yes on this proposition, we would really need to see a very strong and specific use of proceeds. If AMC came out and said, hey, we are going to use the use of proceeds from this super large offering in order to create our own streaming service, I think a lot of people would say, yes, we would want to approve this, but we haven't seen anything like that come up yet. So we are going to have to wait and see as we get close to this May uh, date. So that is going to conclude this update for AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a really profitable day and I'll see you guys in the next video.